In Chapter 10, Beyond Andragogy, we discover that one aspect of the andragogical model that disturbs many people is that not all adults seem to fit the assumptions. Adult learners are not as much alike as the model suggests. There are many individual differences among learners that interact with the core learning principles to shape adults' learning behaviors. Experienced adult learning professionals have learned that like most models, the andragogical learning principles are tempered by a variety of other factors that affect learning behavior. Knowles reinforced this by saying, the andragogical model is a system of elements that can be adopted or adapted in whole or in part. It is not an ideology that must be applied totally and without modification. In fact, an essential feature of andragogy is flexibility. The major premise of research on individual difference is that instructors should adapt instruction to accommodate differences in individual abilities, styles, and preferences. By doing this, it is expected that learning outcomes will improve. Researchers call this aptitude by treatment interaction. It simply means that the instruction interacts with individual abilities to produce learning outcomes. Research has not provided consistent support for aptitude treatment interactions, although it has shown many instances in which the interactions do occur. Methodological issues have also limited researchers from generalizing about this premise. Most practitioners, however, find high face validity in the notion that different learners require different instructional strategies based on their individual differences. The safe conclusion is that individual differences do affect learning, but researchers do not have the tools to adequately measure or study them. In this table, you see Jonathan and Grabowski's typology of individual differences that impact learning. Using their table, individual differences can be classified into three broad categories of cognitive, personality, and prior knowledge. Referring to the Jonathan and Grabowski table again, cognitive differences can be further classified into the subcategories of cognitive abilities, cognitive controls, cognitive styles, and learning styles. There is an extensive list of characteristics that could be included in each category, but the individual differences that most directly impact adults' learning behavior within the andragogical model are intelligence, field dependence, independence, learning style, locus of control, and prior knowledge. Teaching learners how to learn serves as a complement to adjusting the instructional methodology. The fundamental precept in this response is that by broadening learning capabilities, learners can more readily adapt to a wide range of learning situations, thereby increasing the learning outcome. Learning how to learn has become increasingly important in the workplace. For employees to successfully obtain and retain their positions, they must be able to learn in a variety of learning environments. Employees are not often afforded the luxury of selecting their own learning situation and methodology and consequently must adapt or face the possibility of the loss of a job. Gibbons offers a useful model that helps clarify the range and scope of learning how to learn research and practice. First, she suggests that learners need to be effective at learning in three kinds of learning. Natural learning, learning that occurs as the individual interacts spontaneously with the environment. Formal learning, learning in which content is chosen by others and presented to the learner. And personal learning, self-directed intentional learning activities. Gibbons goes further in her model by defining three aspects of learning. Reason, the executive operation, more concerned with the management of thinking than the thinking itself. A key element of reason's role in thinking is learning to improve one's ability in perceiving, analyzing, proposing, imagining, and reflecting. Emotion, responding with feeling, developing commitment, and acting with confidence. Key elements in this aspect are experiencing feelings, clarity, developing confidence, and determination and trusting intuition. Action, using learning to take meaningful action. Key elements include making decisions, taking initiative, practicing, 
solving problems, and influencing others. Finally, Gibbons provides us with three domains of learning in which adults must be effective. Number one, technical. Instrumental learning to conduct the practical activities of work and life. Number two, social. Learning how to relate to others for mutual benefit. And number three, developmental. Learning how to develop oneself as a person and as a learner. Smith suggests that there are three interrelated components to learning how to learn that are useful to help learners become more effective. Needs, learning styles, and training. With needs, learners need general understandings about learning and its importance to develop a positive attitude and motivation to learn. Next, they need basic skills such as reading, writing, math, and listening to be able to perform in learning situations. Third, they need to understand their personal strengths and weaknesses as learners as well as their personal preferences for learning situations and environments. Finally, they need the skills to perform in three learning processes. Self-directed, which requires skills for planning, directing, and monitoring one's own learning. Collaborative learning, which requires strength in teamwork and interpersonal skills. And institutional learning, which requires basic study skills. With learning styles, the core premise of learning styles is that individual learner preferences will lead to learners being less effective in learning situations that require them to leave the comfort of their preferred learning style. Unless they develop a broader array of learning skills, they will struggle in those situations that don't fit their natural style. Theorists believe, however, that people can learn how to learn differently from ways they naturally prefer. With training, the third component refers to deliberate efforts to help learners develop the skills they lack. This training might include workshops, coaching, self-study, and practice. The developmental perspective of adult learning focuses on the progressive aspect of becoming an adult. It is not a status that is achieved instantaneously. Adult development theories are generally divided into three types. Physical changes, cognitive or intellectual development, and personality and social role development. According to B, development theories vary only in two dimensions. The first of these dimensions involve development and change. Development theories imply a hierarchical ordering of development sequences and change theories are descriptive of changes typically experienced by adults. The second variance revolves around the inclusion or exclusion of stages. Stage theories imply fixed, sequentially occurring stages. The core contribution that lifespan development theories make to working with andragogical principles of adult learning is in clarifying and refining adult readiness to learn. The premise of all these theories is that there are certain predictable types of changes that occur throughout an adult's life. Adults are most ready to learn when the learning meets an immediate life need and are most motivated when it fills an internal need. Based on Levinson's Life Task Development Model, Table 10-3, page 224 of the text, is there a true midlife crisis phenomenon? If so, what might it involve and why? Number two, what are some specific individual differences that might influence a learning behavior? Number three, are you a field-dependent learner or a field-independent learner? Why? And number four, with regard to lifespan theories and based upon the motivations of the learners, facilitators often hear some form of life transition pushing the adult to learn. Discuss what those motivations might be and what personal motivations for learning you may have experienced.